Hello everyone, welcome to the RC Printer YouTube channel. Today we have printed for you the MK Ultra, a 3D printable RC racing buggy by 3D designer Tahusvet. And I'll have a link to all of his designs and this design in the description below. This model is a 110 scale competition racing buggy, uh, which is meant to compete with the likes of Team Associated, Team Losi, X-Ray, Schumacher on the racing circuit. This model is the successor to the popular Lynx 3D printable buggy, and um, the designer to who's fed has actually come out with a new design as well, uh, the Badger, uh, which you can check out online, which is a front wheel drive. This one was originally for sale on Colts 3D for, I think it was about 15 US, uh, but he has made it a free design now. It is well worth the $15 if you had to pay it, so uh, getting it for free is definitely a bargain. So today I'm going to give you a little tour of it and then we're also going to pull it outside and give it its first run and see how it does out there. It's not 100% complete, I'm still missing uh, paint on the exterior obviously, but uh, it's mostly together and uh, let's pop off the hood here and take a look at what we got. So inside you can see we have a uh, belt driven buggy, first belt driven buggy that we've uh, built so far. Um, you can see here's the rear drive belt and here's the front drive. These are driven by this spur gear. There's the pinion that attaches to the little motor right there. You can see four-wheel drive. The belts at the back and the front attach to open differentials and they're 3D printed open differentials which you can see there seem to work quite well. The wheels can spin independently. They don't need to spin uh, together. And the belts also have some tensioners built in. You can see the front tensioner right there. You just loosen that screw and the bearings can be uh, oriented slightly more downwards and then you tighten that screw up there again. And then there's another tensioner here in the back that you actually uh, tension from underneath. The designers recommended doing these steel drive shafts, which are really easy to find online and they're really inexpensive and they're adjustable in length. The front ones fit right out of the box, but the rear ones you have to customize a little bit. So you have to actually take about a centimeter off um, in order to get them to fit properly, but it's quite easy to do with a Dremel or just a file. All the linkages are 3D printed ball joints. You can see here in the front, we have uh, 3D printed balls and they work really well. And that includes the front suspension, rear suspension, and also the steering. Uh, that's all done through 3D printed ball joints, which is pretty sweet. And the front steering actually has bearings embedded in all of the linkages, so it actually turns really uh, quite smoothly and better than simply plastic just uh, rubbing against each other. I'm running a 4370 kilovolt brushless motor in here. Uh, with a 60 amp ESC, it's just a, a cheap surpass hobby uh, kit. And I'm also running a 2S LiPo battery here. Um, this space for a battery is actually made specifically for uh, Gen Zace Shorty Hard Pack LiPo kit, um, but I didn't have one, so I'm just using a little 2S battery I had lying around. So to build this buggy, um, I would say it is just a little bit more expensive than your normal 3D printed project, and that's because uh, you do have these metal drive shafts instead of 3D printed ones. You have a lot more bearings than you would normally have because there are bearings in the linkages and there are bearings on the tensioners. And you also have these belts here that you have to purchase. Now, when printing this buggy, you're actually gonna print all of the pieces with 100% infill, which is great because it adds to the strength of the model. And the designer actually said that if you're going to race it, if you don't print with 100% infill, not only is it not gonna be as strong, but it's also gonna be very light for its weight class. The shell though, um, is actually a bit unique from the shells we've printed before. Uh, this one actually has one exterior wall only and only about 5% infill. And that results in a really flexible um, shell here. And you can see we have these grooves and we can just flex it right over the body like that. And It just pops into place like that, which is a really great design. And then the same thing for this rear wing, it is printed the same way. The wheels that we've gone with here are just some cheap buggy wheels, 110 buggy wheels uh, off of Amazon. So we have not opted to 3D print those, although you can. And we've gone with uh, purchase shocks instead of the 3D printed shocks you can get with it. You can also do a conversion kit for this if you want. You can convert it to a Porsche. He's got a Porsche kit available online, which is pretty cool. We'll have to do that at some point. And on the inside here, 
Um, I haven't done it yet, but you can 3D print a slipper clutch for it. You know, we'll see how it is right now and we'll see if we need to add any of those things later. Now the designer does also recommend that you do purchase gears for your MK Ultra and you don't use the 3D printed ones. It says they're just for temporary use until, you know, your real gears arrive. And I have purchased uh, one of these team associated spur gears and I have a, a set of metal pinions that would fit with it as well but I figured why not just start with these 3D printed ones and we'll see how long they last. I did lube them with some super lube so that should help them last a little bit longer. I've had good success on other models uh, with 3D printed gears but we will uh, see how long these ones last. So let's get this thing buttoned up and we'll get it out for a test run and see how it does. Alright we got it already turned on and let's uh Take it for its first run. All right, so it seems pretty good so far. It's a bit, it rained last night, so it's a bit slippy out here. Um, so we're gonna try it on some grass and see how that does. Here we go. Okay, so we got it back inside here and we can see this rear belt has slipped off completely. The front one still seems okay. We'll check that out and uh, see what we got. Alright, so we got the back end apart here. And you can see there the belt just slipped right off the rear differential. And one thing I noticed was that it seems like this right here is the tensioner and it gets pushed up by that screw right there. How well you can see that that screw right there. You can tighten that up from the bottom and I did have it fairly tight but it seems like this tensioner um, might not slide up this little groove completely straight like it might go off kilter to one side and I think that may be causing the belt to slip over to uh, the right hand side of the car a little bit. So um, that's something to watch. Okay, so we got the back end back together now and uh, everything seems to be nice and tight. Um, and we're gonna give it another test go here, see how she runs. Okay, everything seems to be running pretty good. The differentials seem to be working like they're supposed to. Um, so I think I'm gonna take it outside and give it another run here. All right, here we go again. I do hear some slipping, not entirely certain what that is.
That back belt slipped off again. All right, so we're back inside with the MK Ultra. Uh, first run, we had some mixed success. It actually did seem to run quite well, very maneuverable, turns really easily. It can be quite quick when you hit the throttle. The differential seemed to work pretty good. It had tons of grip. Unfortunately, we are having an issue with this rear belt here, which keeps slipping off. I don't know what's causing that yet. It may be the tensioner. Uh, it may actually be the rear differential itself. It might have printed wonky, so I'll have to check that out and uh, maybe print a new one and see. I haven't seen anyone else online having the same sort of issues, so I might have to go post in some of the forums and just uh, see if anyone can help me out with that. But otherwise, it's uh, been a pretty fun project so far, and I look forward to uh, ironing out the kinks. So see you next time. Remember, if you're looking for fun RC projects to build, kits or parts to build them, check us out, rcprinter.com.